welcome to the Christian Center Church Podcast. If you'd like to sow into this ministry, you can do so at the link below. Thank you for joining us, and we hope the message today will bless you. Hey Amen. We're pushing in this morning. We just bless the Word in Jesus' name. Are y'all ready? Amen. And we will be preaching off calendar. That means we will not be talking about Mother's Day today. <laughs> we ought to be talking about our mothers every day. We ought to be lifting before the Lord every day. Amen. But I want to talk about something that, some, that people squander. I want to talk about something that, that, that people really uh, don't pay much attention to till they need it. I, you know, I, I want you to know that, that, that time is one of the most precious things that we have. It's probably the, pre, the most precious thing that we can give to God. How many of y'all understand? This morning for a little while, I'm going to minister on time bandits. Amen. You know, they got some bandits. They'll get you time. They'll take it from you. They'll rob you. Amen. They'll, they'll, they'll stick you up. Amen. They wear, they'll wear a little mask. they stick you up like an old Western movie. But let me tell you what they do. They'll give you all kind of other things to do, and they'll mess your time up. How many of you know what I'm talking about this morning? Amen. You know, one of the greatest things we have, and, and, and it become, people are really not aware of it. When you, when you start getting a little older, you start seeing how precious time is. is. You know, so 40 years when I heard. Keep slipping, slipping, slipping into the future. I didn't know what they was talking about. No, time is running into the future. It's not slipping. It's running when you get my age. Now, when you're 15, 14, 12, it's just slipping. But you get my age, it's running that way, amen. Running up father time. You know, I I used to be on time. Now I'm chasing father time, if y'all know what I'm talking about. It's one of the greatest things that, that we have. And it's the, per, the greatest thing I can give personally to God. Do you realize? Listen to me. My time is better than my money. My time is better than my attitude. My time is better than my philosophy. My time in allow, allowing God to use it is a precious thing that God will use your time. Can you say it? Now, I, I believe people say to get out and to get the calendar out. But very few people are penciling in God's time. Uh-oh. I was doing good for a minute. <laughs> you know, and I say personally, there's nobody can give time to God but you. Now, I can pay somebody to show up and, and help pick up paper. I can, I can pay somebody to come down and do physical things at the church. I could pr- probably pay but not trust somebody to pray for me. Isn't that a crazy thing? People would vow $1,000 and then believe they're going to pay for it. Listen, to it. we'll do it cheaper than that. We'll do it in Jesus' name, do it for free. So y'all come on down. <laughs> But, you know, time's like money. You know, how many of you know when you spend money a certain, uh, when I say time's like money, it's, time is like limited money. How many of y'all know we all got limited time? We do. We got an expiration date on us. It's going gonna, it's gonna to come up one day. It's going to cash in. It definitely is. But what's important between now and then is what we do with our time. How we there, struck our time, have a constru- some, some structure in our time, you know. You know, it's much like money. You spend it, you can't spend that money again. You know, the next time you get ready to reach for it, it's gone. You know, when we're really honest, and when I have an assessment of my life, an assessment of my time, what does it really look like in the grand scheme of things? We put a lot of time in this and a lot of time in that, but what the body of Christ needs to be aware of, that there's a lot of things that God wants us to do, but let me tell you what he wants. He wants you, first of all. And he wants you to be willing not, not, you know, I'm going to go down there and put two hours in. Well, hold on now. It ought to be a joy to put two hours in. It ought to be, come on, we put our time in with the Lord. It should be. And we come to the place that not be, allow time bandits in our life, but become time healers in our life. Amen. Go with me to Ephesians 5. I'm going to start about the 14th first. Ephesians 5, 14. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepeth, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. Seeing that we not work circumspectly, I'm saying that wrong, not as fools, but wise. Redeeming the time, why? Because the day is evil. Amplifies it this way. It said, make, it, make it the very most important of your time. To make the very most of your time on earth, recognizing and taking advantage of each and every opportunity, using it with wisdom and diligence because the days are filled with evil. Now, redeeming actually means, is the same word we might know it in other things means to redeem, but it actually means to rescue that which is lost. 
So he said, in these last times, he said, the day is evil that we should be rescuing in our time. So our time must be in danger. Our time must have some kind of threat against it. He said, the day is evil, and we need to redeem it. Actually, the word means to rescue, to fix. How many of you ever say those things? Amen. You know, the, the question is this, you know, is what do you do with your time? What do I do with my time? What do they do with that time? I, you know, at what manner do you spend it? Oh, yes, it's your time. I, I'll give it to you. It's your time. But what do you do with it? How do you spend it? You know, I'm talking about every day. I'm not talking about in, uh, just, just the things we're not conscious of. I'm talking about being conscious of my time. Isn't it amazing when you really got to be there, it seems like you're in a time crunch. Amen. People talk crazy about time. We talk about it all the time. <laughs> People say something. I got a little time to kill. Let's go to the mall. We got a little time to kill. No, no, no. What would it sound like? We got a little extra time. Let's pray. I got a little extra time. Let's witness. I got a little extra time. You know what we do a lot of our extra time? We worry with it. You get that moment, you, you got that thing going. Hey, you know what, like problems and things come in your life. You'll get that moment and you're being still. And in the back of your head, you're thinking something ought to be wrong. That's that times we ought to be praying. That's that time we ought to be seeking. And you know what we'll do? We'll soon fill in that space of what's wrong instead of what's right. Can somebody say amen? You know, we say things like running out of time. We're running out of time. Because <laughs> it moves quickly. How I many of y'all know what I'm talking about? You know, we say things like it's time to start. Now here, we got a clock, and we're starting on time pretty much. Can you say amen? And when we first started here about three years ago, getting pretty regular, they would be a stickler to start on time. I tell them, come on, we got to go. They're going to start on time. <laughs> I know starting on time is kind of sketchy to some of us, amen. I got a granddaughter's never on time. Now, if you want to invite her and you need her there at 7, tell you y'all leaving about 6.30. About 6.30 or 6.15. And she'll be there at 7. She'll be ready to go. Amen. <laughs> you know, people say this. We, we lose time and we'll say something. We'll spend, and isn't it amazing when the, the time doesn't, uh, the expenditure of time doesn't set good with us. We got something about it. But when we waste time and do time, we don't think much about it. We'll say things like this. Next time, it'll be different. That means like I burnt that time. It's going to be different. Like, what? I'm going to get in control of my time. So you can get in control of your time. Can somebody say amen? You'll say things like, or I said that, it's things like, that's three hours of my life I'll never get back. You know why? Because you burnt time. You got the time and it went away. How is it that when it's a slight to us, we notice it more? Amen? You know, I just don't have time. Yeah, you do. That's not enough time in the day. Yeah, there is. You know, let me tell you what, if it's not enough time in a day, what you might need to do is get up earlier. Go to bed earlier. Can somebody say amen? <laughs> People say things like saving time. Let's go around there. We'll save time. You'll go right way and save time, and you'll get over there and do something else, get distracted. <laughs> Sometimes I, I don't know what, what they call that when you, uh, uh, you, you can't keep your focus. They call that tension deficit disorder or something. I've got that. I'm doing something else disorder. I don't know what it is. I'll go in the room. Now I'm doing something else. She said, you go out. I'm doing something else. So I don't have that. I got doing something else disorder. Amen. But you know what? It, we, we get to that place. We start time. He said, it, we'll say things. Uh, uh, you think you can go over there? Else? We'll say, if I can get the time. If, if I can get the time. If there's any time left. You know, we say these things. Why? Because they matter, and we talk about it all the time, but it really fits us what we want or what we see the lack of receiving what we want. It's not really about God's time. It's not really about putting in ministry time. And listen, every one of us is called to the ministry. Every one of us is called to be disciples. Every one of us is called to open our mouth and speak of the master. Can you say amen? You know, you know, and, and one day, you know, time is going to go on. Let me tell you, time's going to go on without me. Time's going to move on. But, you know, I need to be in the right place. And it may be a number of answers this morning to ask what you spend your time. But the fact is, and here it is, you can make the note. We spend our time on what we want to. Is it true? 
And, and just think about it. When you get a crunch and you get a little time, you got to do something, you can work that in. You don't have to go to the mall. You don't have to do nothing. You got, I've got, y'all go ahead. I've got so much to do. I, you're going to dedicate it, amen. But, you know, sometimes if you spread yourself out and get a plan, you won't have to get all crunched up. Get a plan to serve the Lord. Get a plan to witness. Get a plan to say something. If we just speak of Jesus as much as we complain. Anybody there listen to me? Amen. <laughs> you know, how many of y'all believe we can do better if we ask the Lord to help us with our time and become time management? Because we can say a lot of things what we're going to do, but how many of y'all know we are not promised tomorrow? Amen. We're not. You know, I look like, you know, and over, go with me in James 4, you know, and I know sometimes I feel this way that I know I probably won't be dying or the coming of the Lord for the next week or two because I've got so much to do, I don't have time before he gets here. So, so sometimes I feel pretty good about it. I said, well, if you want me to do all that, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be coasting here because it's going to take time to get it done. I mean, y'all know what I'm talking about. But we like what we do. I mean, is it just me? James 4, wherefore you know not what you shall be, where you shall be, or what shall be tomorrow. He said, for what is life? It is even a vapor. It appear for a little time, then vanish away. For you ought not say, or you ought to say, excuse me, if the Lord will, we shall live and do this and that. You know what he said? You ought to check with God before you make plans. You don't even know what's in your life. You don't even know what's going on ahead of you. Now, that's what James said. Now, he's the brother of Jesus. Now, he had to give him, you know, I guess it was hard being James. Can you say amen? <laughs> They'd say things like, why can't you be like your brother? <laughs> Every now and then, throw James a bone, tell James, go ahead and close out with prayer. Can you say amen? James, you ready? For you ought to say if the Lord wills, and what that amplifies this, he said, do you not know the least thing about may happen tomorrow in your life? You don't even know. You, see, you don't even know the least of things would happen in your life tomorrow. <laughs> what, is it, what is secure in your life? You are merely a vapor, like a puff of smoke, a whist of steam from a cooking pot. It is visible for a while and then vanishes into the air. Instead, you are to say at the Lord's will, we will live and we will do thus and that. You know, now, now think about how long you've been here now. This, this is your life. You ready? Now, some of y'all don't smell that good. But this is my life. All that I do, all that I plan, all that I seek God in, in this earthly life. It's over. It's just the essence that we've been here. It's just that they talk about you being here. It's just something that you left. Oh, he said, life is like a faith. He said, no, you, you ought not say all the stuff you're going to do. You ought to get with him and the God wills. And if you're looking for God's will, he said, you ought to have a plan of what I'm doing. Amen. Am I in line with you? Yes, I ain't in the back of the line, but I'm in line. Can you say amen? I'm out in the front of the line. But I'm working it up. And the older you get, the more you start working it out. Older you get, you start working out things that are important. Older we get, we start seeing where we need God more, that we want to get something done, we need him to get it done. Amen. It's amazing to me the time gets by us. It gets by us. And, and with great stability, you know, you look at somebody's life that seem like they had great stability spiritually, physically, mentally, financially. I see people like that every now and then. And you know really what is behind that? What is behind that, that they have time management. They manage their families. They manage, and you ought to have your family. Let me tell you, we can put it any way we want, but it's God, family, and church. It's not church, family, and God. It's God. Family and church. Of course, God's me and I'm next. Can you say amen? And we got to get that order and spend that time for him. Can you say amen? Sometimes we get it out of deal and with good intentions we do that. But let me tell you, commonly thing, the most common thing God wants is a little of our time and to be directed. Amen. We often say what time it is. You know why? Because it matters. How much time we got left? That's what we'll do. You know, when I first come, started coming down here preaching, I'd say, how much time I got? <laughs> now I say, hang on, put your strap on it. <laughs> it's not that bad. Yeah, we often say, why? Because it matters. We say, what time is it? Is it yeah, I mean, y'all know the Lord is going to come. And he said, he said, be wise. He tells us not to be asleep. He tells us to wake from our slumber. 
He tells us not be. He said if a, if a man been watching, he'd not been asleep, his house wouldn't have been broken. Into. So he said, you know, he said they that sleep, let them sleep in the night, but not in the day. Be awake. Be what you do. And it means to be aware of what it is. And, you know, time to, to, that we need to, to be there. You ask that. We said, what time we need to be there? And most of you time massagers, most of you time smashers, you'll say, oh, we don't have to be there to three. <laughs> we got plenty of time. It's 30-minute drive, and we got 40 minutes. <laughs> if, you're not three, if you're not 15 minutes early, you're late. If you're on time, you're late. You should be there early. Why? Because time matters. It matters to people. What time are we going to be there? I hope we get there a little bit early because we need to do thus and thus. Sometimes we don't manage time well. And what we really know, ought to know that the day is evil. And he's telling us you need to mind, you need to mind your time. Yeah. I ain't got time. This is the one we like. This is the one we like the most. You know, we go, I ain't got time for that. Yeah. I'll give that all the time I'm going to give that. Yeah. Oh, this one's my favorite. That's the last time I'm doing that. <laughs> and your finger's about <laughs> broke Last time I'm doing that. Why? Because it matters, you know. Because time you got when you deal with others, uh, it's precious to some people. You know, some people are always late and always doesn't matter. They can wait on me. Look, we love you. The Lord loves you. But you're not that important to get ahead of the Lord's business. Now, listen to what I'm saying. We ought to act like we're on time for him. Can you say amen? You know, we always want to be there, barely our own. Let me tell you, if we get there a few minutes, you're standing around a place of quiet. You know, you might accidentally get to speak to somebody about Jesus. Get there just a little bit early. Can you say amen? Now, I want you to know, I've got there. It was the wrong day. Sister, Sister Wanda and I, we got up. It's been several years. We got up. We got ready to go to church. We looked good. We got up. We're going through the, we're getting after. We got there. We got to church, got our, got our biscuit and sausage. We got to church. We're sitting in there. And, 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 and after a while, I, I looked at her and I said, you know, ain't nobody here. She said, I said, I don't know where they're at. She said, ain't nobody here either. I said, don't know. Well, we got there about 10 o'clock, about quarter to 10, still nobody there. I'm thinking, well, the wolf come got the sheep. I don't know where they're at. Either Jesus come got them. I didn't know nothing about it. I didn't even know nobody was bad. So we sat there, and I got my phone out and finally looked at it, and it was Saturday. <laughs> now, it matters. It matters what day you're at church. I know some days it don't feel like it's mattering while we're here. I know some days. <laughs> but some, we were working it up about quarter to ten. Hey, they really might not be coming. I'm going all through rehearsal in my head. I'm saying, I must have did that. That's why when I said, I said, I shouldn't have talked about her grandma. I shouldn't have said that. I just shouldn't have said it. <laughs> Whatever it was. Yeah, it was Saturday. <laughs> so I believe people got good intentions, but I believe they're showing up on Saturday, not Sunday. I believe some people were supposed to be in there Tuesday for the Lord, and they showed up Thursday. Yeah. Good intentions. We was there. We was dressed up. We looked just like we was going to church. <laughs> You know, for I went a while for, I went a while. I didn't wear a tie. I would just you know wear ox, you know just a shirt was that it? And I wore a tie, I wore a tie to church. And one of my parishioners looked at me and said, "Bert Jerry, you got a funeral today?" I said, "No." She said, "Well, you're wearing a tie." So, so I found out sometimes it looked like a funeral. Amen. You know, somebody say, you know, could you give me a little more time? No, I can't give you a little more time. I found out people that do not redeem their time. I found out people that that are always pressing the time. They want your time. Can you wait on me? Now you you get people. You get older. You we ask people for stuff like their memory. <laughs> Don't let me forget to go by and pick that milk up. <laughs> uh, Don't let me forget. We need to. We boil people's memory. Then we got people there who said, well, can we wait? Can we do it next time? Listen to me. If you, look, I understand things change, but, and sometimes they do, but you need to be a person of your word. Be on time. The day is evil. The enemy will use it, but we should be in the right place. And if God's all about this time, Lord, I'm on time in the right place. Now, what, where else do we need to be? What, where else? If you're late, you're always trying to get in the last program. If, if you're not on time, y'all listening to me? 
But we know that the hour is short. How many of y'all know that? You know, people said, you know, <laughs> they'll say things like, you know, uh, 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 if I had more time, I'd do this for God. That's an untruth. That's a cop-out. Somebody in there listening to me? But if I had more time, I'd do so and so for the Lord. Look, quit doing your stuff and do some of his stuff. You'll have plenty of time. <laughs> Don't look at me like that. I'll come down there to you. Hold on Redeeming the time for the day is evil. You know that, that we got time bandits. How I many of you know we got time bandits? They want to stick up your time. You know, some people got dead conversations. They talk about stuff that, that, uh, that are never, uh, uh, never lift up Christ. We spend a lot of time in dead conversations. Anybody listening to me? Yeah, and I need a little more time by because time is the answer. We had a little more time, we get it done. Boy, I tell you what. <laughs> And then there's, there's times that if you're like me and you're feeling antisocial, <laughs> I'm glad we got rid of that time. I'm glad we moved on from that. I'm glad the time passed. I'm glad the time came. I mean, y'all know what I'm talking about. You know, it, it's just a cop-out when we say we don't have time to work for God. It's just a cop-out to say that we don't. Amen. But isn't it amazing? We get everything done that I want. Everything done that I want to do. Well, sometimes, come on, see me. You, you got to say, you say, you don't understand. It's not enough time in the day. I understand that. I told you what, in the opening what we need to do. If it's not enough time in the day, give up some night. <laughs> you know, time bandits, you know. When you start you really hearing what somebody says, you'll find out that, that it's, either, it's in time management. A lot of things are in time management. We know when I was young, they tell me about time management, and I thought I had a lot of things. I told them that I needed a lot of things, but time wasn't my problem. I needed other things. But let me tell you, time is precious. Time is a precious thing that we spend. And who you spend your time with, and how you spend your time, and what atmosphere you spend your time, and what conversation we have. Y'all listening to me? I'm probably the least spiritual person among you. But I tell you, I know who my Savior is. And I'm not scared to talk about him. I pull up to the, I, I, I'll get inside the uh, uh, Walmart. I don't care. Talk to the, to the clerk. It's fixing to happen. Amen. Yeah. Had a woman in Walmart. Been in there. I don't know how many years she's been. I know, excuse me. McDonald's. And I don't know how many years she's been managing. Nice lady. Been, we got to, and then got to talking about her life. She said, she said, Pastor said, pray for me. He says, these young people. She found out she can't control young people. <laughs> I told her, I said, you know what the problem is? I said, she said, what? I said, they turn into old people too. I said, just hang on. I said, but I told her, I said, you know, they're not in charge of your feelings, but you're letting them be in charge of your feelings. They're giving you a bad day so much that you're telling me about it. I said, you're in charge of your feelings. Don't let them do that. She looked at me. She said, well, you right, huh? I said, yeah, well, son, after I got my cup, because I'm getting me a drink, waiting on my meal, she went back there. I said, uh-oh, she's lying in the mountain. I'm like, let me get out of here. Let me get out. Let me get out. But sometimes we allow people to steal our time with our joy and, and the things in our life. Listen to me. Y'all pray for me. Y'all don't have nothing to pray for? Even, no, no, no. I, I ain't wait for that because you got stuff to pray for. Work me in and pray for me. Because, you know, sometimes I just, I just don't ha have it sometimes. People want some things, but they don't want the Lord. I have no other answer but him. You know, and if you do this, you know, and, and understand you don't have enough time. Well, you got to do whatever. I understand that, that sometimes you got to manage it better. And, and sometimes I understand if you're going to reach for a goal, if you're going to change something, you got to get up out of the bed and get it changed. You can wish all you want and hope all you want until you get some legs on your vision and get up and put some time in what you want to see to come to pass. And they will. A lot of people are waiting on somebody else to do it. And this is what they'll say. It's about time. <laughs> yeah, they weren't doing anything. Now, don't make them feel like, well, I wasn't on time. No, they weren't doing anything, and they're waiting for somebody else. I think you should invest your time. I think you should give your time. But I don't think we ought to have time bandits and give time to things that do not deserve it. Like worry and doubt and unbelief and all that crazy stuff. Y'all listening to me? You know, we got to have some kind of, some kind, some kind of, uh, 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 reach, something to reach for. But we're going to have to get up and pursue it. If you don't pursue it, it won't happen. You know, the body of Christ needs balance. 
Amen? And I'm not talking about Obi-Wan Kenobi, baby. I'm talking about balance. Amen? Poor old sister one when she got it. She got in her calamity, she didn't have balance. She'd get up chair, she'd go. Oh, here she go. Maybe she don't. Maybe she is. Might look like, oh, she like she made it. Oh, look. Let me tell you what, that took time for her to heal up. It took time for her to get better. And it wasn't any good time, can you say amen? Yeah. So I'm telling you, sometimes well, we have to put time in unpleasant things. I don't like dealing with death. I don't like dealing with sick. I don't like, listen to me. You got to pray for me, like I said. Uh, I'll listen, but when it becomes a complainer and they don't want to change or take the advice, I just really don't have much time for that. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Now, we can sit and talk about it all night. Amen. Isn't that amazing? When things is right, you can get it done. You know, I, I've heard this. You ever heard this? That, that a fool and his money is soon parted. Let me tell you, your time and a fool will soon be parted from you. You're going to wake up older, work up where all the years went, wonder what happened. Sometimes I, I, tell, I tell, look at one, I said, we must live in the matrix. That's 10 years. I don't know what happened. The boy was born, then he graduated. I just don't know what happened. That's 15, 18 years. What happened? Y'all, anybody you know what I'm talking about? The phrase is typically used for, uh, uh, to somebody who's losing something. Either they're being tricked out of it or they're spending it wastefully. You know, sometimes we spit, we're tricked out of our time and sometimes we, we waste our time. Yeah. yeah. Why well, is that just me and a couple of other folks? Amen. You know, some things are important, but they're not critical. Not everything deserves our time. Now, listen, some things are important and some things are critical, but some things... Uh, are not important and critical at the same time. You know, if you got a broke arm, it's probably, you know, it, it's probably important. But if you got a bone sticking out of it, it's become critical. <laughs> it, it's become critical. And some of that stuff in our life is, is critical that we put the time there. And some of that stuff is important, but some of that stuff we just want to do and it pleases us and it's how we want it. Come on. It's some things are very important. And what we need to do is be a part of that. Look at me. Why is it that we put off important and hard things to the last? You'll think something. Man, I got to make that happen the next couple of days. I got, you had them six months. <laughs> Are we just talking about Pastor Jerry this morning? <laughs> but, you know, you, you got to spend our time on things that's important. Things that are critical, things, things that make a difference, things that, that happen. And I'm not saying that, 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 that your lives are wrong. What I'm telling you is that we sometimes have an order problem. We, we have a balance problem of putting things in. Some things I found out later that, that oh my goodness, I, my hair's on fire and they're, they're talking to me in caps. You know, they're all caps hollering at me, got it highlighted in red. What's up? Her hair's on fire. 20 minutes later, oh, never mind, I was mistaken. Tragedy averted. <laughs> Some things are not that important. Some things are not, 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 not designed to take our day and smash it. Can you say amen? When our lives have order and the leading of the Holy Spirit and the Word of God, you'll get more done in less time. I said if he's leading it, you'll get more done in less time. You will. Amen. I tell you, I've seen times of God working. I'm like, I couldn't have got all that done. Yeah, I did. You know, why? how can I pray? Well, I can pray according to Ecclesiastes 3 and 11, I think it is, or maybe it's Ecclesiastes 3 and 1. It says, everything there is a season to every time to every purpose under the heaven. <laughs> you know what? Time bandits know no season. They'll get you whenever they can, whatever they can. They'll work things up. Can you say amen? But he said, if it's a season for everything, it's a time for everything, it's time to get your kids done. It's time to get school work done. It's time to cook. It's time, it's time to do all those things. Some people say, oh, yeah. oh Brother Jerry's doing good. He started talking about cooking. <laughs> well, if you go to McDonald's, make time. Go to McDonald's. <laughs> but you know what, what the deal is? That it says every season, so there must be. So it is. So, so if I'm not getting some things done for the Lord, I think, if I'm not getting some things done in my house, if I'm not getting some things in my life, I'm not getting some things done in my work, or wherever I'm at, I've got to understand to everything there is a time. Yeah. Everything's good. Everything's good. You know, what, what we, we let kids hurry us up. And we let them. I, I, looked over, I looked over and she, the kid went, 
did that, and they got up and got their purse and left because the kid told them it was time to go. Kids don't tell me what time to go. <laughs> I done got too old, we told. But you see, we used to use that. We'd, get, we'd go to church, and we left our kids at home, and we'd want to get back to our kids so we didn't have any, uh, we didn't have to, we had to get back to kids. Look, kids is on their own, amen. So if y'all want to party and take me to Astro World, I'll be free, can you say amen? If y'all want to take me to on a cruise, I'll be free, amen. So y'all let me know, I got time, amen. Y'all didn't sound like y'all want to help me on that one. <laughs> you know, it's not hard to be faithful to wrong things. Oh, yeah, it's not hard to be faithful to wrong things. In fact, it's easy to be faithful to wrong things. You know, Proverbs 25, 19 says, Confidence in an unfaithful man in the time of trouble is like a broke tooth and a foot out of joint. Oh, my goodness. You ever had a chipped tooth? I had one in the back right here, and every time I moved my tongue, it would it rake across it and hurt my tongue. And y'all know I hardly ever talk or say anything, so I'm never really moving my tongue. And you can look at me, tell me I hardly ever eat. So, you know, it wasn't happening often. But it says, unfaithful man. In a time of trouble, he's like a broke tooth, and a foot is out of joint. Broke foot, he cripple, he tooth it. It is out. Was well, that in the time of trouble? What is the, there's time, but you know what? We have to learn to be faithful men and women of God in the time of trouble. This is where we fail in stress. This is where we fail in sin. This is where the body of Christ falls into drugs and alcohol, promiscuous sex, and so on and so forth, because we do not remain faithful in the time of trouble. Stress. Things come in. Listening to that. It's crazy how the, how the world can get your child's ear ahead of you. That's a demonic force. That's a demon. I mean, we get ready to leave the house. As I told you, we get ready to leave the house and, and, and we keep the music going or, or something going on, you know, uh, some truth going on and we leave it in just one way. I said, leave it on. She said, why? I said, torture the demons while we're gone. <laughs> they come in while we're gone. They sit down. They'll have to leave. She said, man, how much longer before they get back? Confidence is what needs to be. In the time of trouble, we do that. You know, most of us have some word training and to some degree, and we live in the day of excuses, and people find reasons as to why not to serve the Lord and find reason as to what to do with our time. But let me tell you what, we need to reconstruct our time. We need to rebuild our time and get it around some things that God boasts in our life. Can you say amen? He said, redeeming the time for the day is evil. What he's telling us is that, that Paul was seen then. Now, think about it. Now, just think what Paul would say. Paul, the apostle's nose would bleed if he would just see what we're going on. He said, redeeming the time for the day is evil. Now, he's not talking about 100, 200 checks on Facebook. He's not talking about looking at social media 150 times today. He's not talking about that. That wasn't even around, and he says, redeeming the time. What you do? I'm going to get the goats in. What you go? I'm going to go milk, and I'm going to bring them in, and I'm going to get this done. I'm going to get some sticks for fire tonight. We're going to do it. Paul said, redeeming the time for the day is evil. We have so many distractions today. I believe the apostles, Paul's nose would bleed when he seen it. Yeah, I tell you, when I'd get his eyes watering, when I brought him from Oakdale to here in about an hour and 15 minutes, the apostle Paul said, that's going to take a week to get over there. No, hold on, Paul. Yeah, and just think what they thought was time burners. Just think what they thought, were, what thought was a time band. Just think what they were acting unwise with my time. No Facebook, no Walmart, no theater. No Marvel, no, no, no Marvel movies. I know that's sad right there. That sounds bad, no Marvel movies. But Just think about that. Think about what we do with our time. Y'all ready? I'm going to get close because y'all taking it good but not real good. <laughs> We ain't even going to talk about a three-hour uh, Netflix hole watching the movies. Just one more. Just one more. Ooh, they left. That's good. I wonder if they're going to kill him. How do I know so much about it? Well, it ain't none of your business, ain't it? But, anyway. but at one time, I was not aware that things would get it. Can you say Amen. Now I'm sorry. I, 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 we was watching something the other day. I looked at it. I said, baby, we dedicated enough to this. We better go on that change show. Yeah. I mean, y'all know that, that we have time in our life and we must spend it wise. Prayer is a good way to spend our time. Praise is an awesome way to spend your time. Mm -hmm. Listening to the voice of the Lord is a good way. 
People tell me, say, say uh, the Lord never spoke to me. I know he spoke to you, you're just not listening. He speaks. Can you say amen? I said he speaks. Can you say amen? And we can spend time just obeying the word of the Lord. I'm going to obey it. I'm going to try and get, try and get along with Brother Smarty Mouth and Sister Smarty Pants or Brother Bucket Mouth. I'm going to try and get along. I'm going to spend more time trying to get, I'm going to try and get past that and really see what Sister Joy is about and love her like she is. I didn't call her Sister Bucket Mouth. Amen. She's our joy. Amen. I love this joy. But let me tell you what it is. No matter who the problem is, we spend a little more time trying to understand them instead of trying to find out what's wrong with them. You spend more time expressing love. You can do that in a lot of ways. Can somebody say amen? amen. Fellowship. What's that birdie word? Fasting, studying, witnessing. I mean, you spend your time witnessing. Look at me. I'm, getting, I'm trying to get out of here. We spend more time witnessing than we know. It's called L-I-F-E. People looking at it all the time. They listening to what you say. They're watching your reaction. They're watching how you feel. I was young in the Lord. And I probably was about two years in the Lord. I, I was loving the Lord. I, I still love him. I was loving the Lord. And I, would, I moved like a 10-foot ladder, like a 10-foot ladder, and it had a claw hammer on there. And when that hammer fell, it hit me right in the top of the head. And Miss stuff on me back. And it was a hammer. Hit me in the head. And the guy that, I, uh, that was there, I guess he was lost. He looked at me, and I, I, he looked at me. He said, he said, man, he said, I know you saved. I said, saved, and I'm rubbing that knot on my head. He said, you didn't even cuss when that hit hammer hit you in the head. <laughs> Somebody, come on. Somebody ever scared me and I say the S word, shoot, you know. Yeah. But, you know, you spend time studying and witness. You witness you, you're witnessing more than you know you're witnessing. I said, you're witnessing more than, uh, 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 Sister T, well, is that whenever they get out there, you know what they're doing when my sister, she's not cussing one of them, milk box, one of them uh, mailboxes, are you? are not cussing them mailboxes when you're putting them in the truck, are you? They're watching if you're cussing them mailboxes. I, they watch when I cuss them. No, I don't know. But they're watching the, they're watching the mail lady. They're watching you. They're watching the clerk. They watch people. People are watching. Can you say amen? Yeah. Criminals are stupid today. How in the world people don't think it's a camera on every corner? It's a ring on every door here. They'll see you going by that ring. They seen you with a truckload. The dog's in the back of your truck. They know you stole it. The dog's in your truck. People try to spend time being mischievous. People spend, put time being criminal. We need to put time in praying. We need to put time in confessing the word. We need to put time in meditation upon the word. We need to put time in forgiveness. Need to put most important time in your kids, your family. Hello? Kingdom things. Church stuff. Being trained in the body of Christ. Giving. You know, we ought to put time in that. Can you say amen? Y'all getting ready? I want you to stand with me this morning. We're going to go through the bad list. I'm fine. I hope you're on the list and hope to get you off the list this morning. Amen. You know, that, that, that time is so precious. It, 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 you just don't know, amen. You know, it's irrelevant, you know, at a certain time. You tell a boy you got 10 years and he's 15, he's, he's cool. But you tell somebody 80, they got 10 years before they can get one of them. They say, I don't know if we're going to get one, but we're going to believe God for it, amen. You know, time it is a precious thing. You know where time bandits are, negative things is worry. About people spending that time. I'm going to preach worry, be here, Amen. People spend a lot of time trying to control others. They spend a lot of time trying to control others. Let me tell you, when you're out of the room, they're going to do what they want to. When your voice no longer resounds over the noise in their life, they're going to do what they want to. People spend a lot of time in unbelief. People spend a lot of time talking about their problems, but never telling God. Let me say that again. A lot of people spend a lot of time talking about the problems, but they don't tell God. Now, we go down there sometime and we complain about it, but m most don't go down for answers. We'd rather complain. We'd rather tell it that way. You know, some people spend a lot of time keeping up with the Jones. Just got to get them one of that. Go get that thing. Man, I was so glad when it, when it went by. They had, that, had them cutouts at the, up, up my way. Had the cut, cutouts, and it'd be a man waving like that. He'd get me almost every time I go by there. He, and I'd wave at him. It was a cutout. Then they had one with a woman bending over in the flower bed or whatever. 
their backside shout them out this way and they do you know people got time for some of the stupid stuff that's crazy had to put all time in that and do that People put time in keeping up with the Jones. People keep time in and, and get one like them and trying to get enough. I, I know a lady bought a car. She bought this car and tell me how nice that car was. It was a nice car. It was a nice car. And had this special color, this special color. And you know what that special color was? Primer gray. You know what the hottest color is today? Primer gray. Now, that, what they're really doing is pulling it off. They didn't have paint. So they primed the car and they put a clear coat on it. And now it's just, oh, look at that primer gray. And they said, oh, it's pretty great. No, that's primer gray. You know, isn't that crazy? That somebody would push for that. No, they just put, put, put the wool over your eyes. That's nothing. Everybody, everything. You notice now as you leave here, you'll see them. They are. And people put time in trying to achieve something like a color of a car. Talking on the phone about endless things that are never changing. Talking about things that only God knows. Some of those things shouldn't have been said. <laughs> All the talking, you know, and for hours and not much about Jesus. People spend time in strife and jealousy. I see more jealousy in men than I do women oftentimes. Oh, oh, I'll go down here and say that. I see more jealousy in men sometimes than I see in women. But men are different. They, they'll reject you. Men will do other things. That, come on. All right, we'll have a men's meeting and you women can't come. No, we might get y'all to come and, and let y'all sit in the front and the men in the back cheering me on. I don't know. We do something. Right? A lot of people spend a lot of time in false hope. People spend a lot of time in past regrets. They're looking back. Shoulda, woulda, coulda. Kicking a can down the road. Come on. That's my daughter sometimes. It's not, not because of the need, but because of the training. She'll want a can of beans, and I say, bring me a can of corn. She'll want a can of corn, and I tell her, bring me a can of beans. She brought me a can one day. It didn't have a label on it. I didn't spend much time on it, but I looked. And I said, what is it? She said, I think it's green beans. I said, so when I get ready to open this can of beans up, if it's not green beans, what could it be? She said, it could be peas. So I'm thinking, I got to fix something with green beans or peas. It don't matter. <laughs> you know, and, and really what it is, you know, people spend a lot of time on something that the label's getting kicked off of it. A lot of surprises, and you can live in regret. You spend a lot of time in that. Spend a lot of time in rehashing your teen years. Spend a lot of time on your first relationship. Spend a lot of time on stuff that broke you hurt you oh my goodness look at your neighbor and say neighbor you're in the right place <laughs> listen to the music it has no value I know in Pastor Jerry I'll throw a Ted Nugent at you or something I know that but that stuff don't envelop my life can you say amen do I think that you do I think there's some of that stuff just just the sweet uh, uh, some of it's cool I don't know how some of them wrote some of that stuff about me and my age now and they was 18 or 19 what did they know I don't understand that I don't understand that but listen to stuff of no value listen to people who don't want to do anything about their complaints gossip number 14 gossip number 15 gossip <laughs> trash reading trash shows y'all listen to me some people spend more time uh oh I'm going to get in trouble because I got to go home some people spend more time at the ball field than they do at church some people spend more time about politics and COVID COVID's out there and it's something but you don't move six million people out of a country and don't give a test and it's an important thing that the, they're, getting, they're ramping up. They're going, they're going, but we knew that. We knew a year ago that they're going to ramp back up. It's okay. We're going to be right. We're going to be fine. Is that all right? God's in time. He knows what's happening. He, we don't have to tell him what happened. He knows what. He's living in this moment with us. Can somebody say amen? But you don't know, complain. Just things that, that are of no value. Now, I don't know about you, sister, but I'm guilty. I'm guilty of giving time to people that does not deserve it.
I give, I'm guilty of giving time to issues that do not deserve it. I'm guilty, y'all listening to me, I'm guilty of studying and worrying about stuff that God had to answer before I started worrying, and I knew he had to answer, but I went ahead and spent the time, can you see? How many of you ever spent the time in the wrong place? Damn, we'll get it back. Amen. So sometimes we need to have an idea of what we need and what we want to do. God, we help us, direct us, and keep us. Now I know this message was probably just for two of us this morning. And the rest of you want you to pray for us. Time is precious church folks. You got so much of it. The writer said to redeem the time for the day is evil. You know it, it, we get things that are so we think are important they're not. They're just not. Amen. Father, we just come to you in Jesus' name. The name above every name. And we proclaim this day, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that you touch each and every one. And, Father, I just want to bless my mothers, Lord God. Bless each and every mother in the name of Jesus, Lord. We just thank you, Father God, for them rocking the cradle, Lord God, to just bring up men and women of God, Father God, that which is in between. And we thank you, Father God, for our mothers. We thank you, Father God, in the direction that it brought their children. And we thank you, Father God, that which you'll do in their life. And today, Father God, as we surrender to you and ask you to just touch our time, Lord, touch where we are. And I understand anything this morning, Father God. I have to have a will and a want to do something about my time. And Father, I ask that you help me, Lord, redeem the time in my life. And we thank you, Father God, that your word is true today as it was yesterday. And we ask you, Father, cover for peace in this house and these homes. We speak great things in the family. And we know, Father God, without you we'll fail, but with you, with you we'll succeed and do great things. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Oh, give him a big hand clap of praise.